The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and rushed the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. <clears throat> He is risen. He is risen, he is risen. He is risen That's all I really need to say. Thank you. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I might have had you fooled for a minute, but you don't get off that easily. There is a lesson today to be taught and to be learned. Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. But Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said to him, Rabunai, which means teacher. Grace, peace, and love from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so here we are, brothers and sisters. We are there outside the tomb that is empty, but there is good news. He is risen. He is risen indeed. But what intrigues me this Easter morning is Mary. Mary, who mistakes Jesus to be a gardener. Maybe his back was turned. Maybe he was hooded and it blocked his face from her. Maybe he was sanctified and his face was too bright with the love of the Lord. Whatever the situation, he revealed himself to her by saying her name. All he had to do was say her name. All he had to do was say, Mary, Mary. And she recognized him because he called her by name, Mary. When Jesus spoke her name, Mary, everything changed. She had been looking for Jesus, but Jesus had found her. It was she who was lost. 
not him. It was she bent over in despair at the tomb who needed lifting up, not Jesus, the living one, raised from the dead. It was he who found Mary and transformed her life. Mary. Oh, it's not the first time that Jesus calls someone by name, no. It's a hallmark of Jesus. It is the hallmark of someone who wants to be in a relationship with you. It is the hallmark of a relational Jesus. It is the way God proceeds, calling you by name, changing your name, changing Saul to Paul, giving you a nickname, Simon to Peter the Rock, all relational aspects of God. Mary. So it was for the rest of Jesus' disciples. Cleopas was on his way to Emmaus, trying to process with a friend all that had happened to Jesus. Jesus' closest disciples were huddled together behind closed doors in Jerusalem, mourning and afraid that they too might be arrested. Others had gone back to fishing, not knowing what else to do. Yet, whether on the road to Emmaus, confused and bewildered, or in a room, locked up in fear, or in their boats, laboring and frustrating over yet another dismal attempt at catching fish, Jesus came to them. He came to his own. In their need, he spoke their name. Thomas, Simon Peter, Cleopas, and their eyes were opened, their hearts burned, and they believed. They are called by name, and they believe. Mary. And probably the most dramatic calling by name was in Bethany. Lazarus, his friend, was dead for four days when Jesus arrived in Bethany. He went to the tomb and commanded, Lazarus! Not, hey, you in there, but Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. Slowly he emerged from the tomb at the calling of his name. <clears throat> and even death cannot keep the call of Jesus from us. Even when you are good and dead, even when you are in a columbarium reduced to ashes, Jesus will call your name and you will hear it in the depths of your being. In the depths of your soul, he knows all his sheep, and when he calls, they will come. Mary. In scripture, names hold deep significance. Occasionally, when God did a new work in a new person's life, their name was changed accordingly. In the Old Testament, when God made a covenant with Abram, which means exalted father, he changed his name to Abraham, which means father of multitudes. And we can easily recall the story of Samuel, who was to anoint kings of Israel. God called him in the night while he slept in the temple. It's a story that reminds us that God is with us. He knows us. He knows you. He knows all of you. And he'll call you by name. To, we, to what do we owe this calling out of our name? I think it is usually because they want something or need something. Hey, Mom, where's my blue shirt? Hey, Dad, can I borrow the car? Hey, Grandma, you know what I want for Christmas? Hey, Grandpa, shh, Grandpa's sleeping. We call on each other because we want something. We need something. Mary, Mary. This is where God's call is different. This is what makes God's call so different from a phone call inviting us for dinner or the pleas of a child who wants a cookie. God's call comes with the power to do what it demands. It comes with the power to do what it demands. 
When we are called, we are given the ability to do what God is asking of us. We are here for a reason. Surprise. We're here for a reason. We are the hands of God. We are the voice of God because we are called by God. Mary. He calls to us because he wants to be, he demands to be in a relationship with us. He calls to us because he wants to be close to you. He calls to us because he loves and cares for us, and he calls to us because he wants something from us, a relationship. He calls to us to remind us to love our neighbor. He calls to us to talk to him. He calls to us to walk with him, and sometimes he wants us to do something. You must ask yourself, why did God create man? <clears throat> why did God create you? He wasn't lonely. Companionship was not his hope. He could have gotten that from a dog, a friendly dog who would never betray him, never leave him, and love him unconditionally. And while God has at, at his disposal a good, friendly dog, I'm sure, he created man. Why? There's only one answer. To be in a relationship with a relational God, it is the only sure thing that I can tell you this morning. That's it. The only sure thing. Now, in this same vein, when asking the question, what does God want, we have to accept that there are no works that we can place in front of God that are worthy of him. There is nothing that you can place in front of God that is worthy of him. There are no works that make us righteous. He is all that God wants. And I know this because as soon as you give it to him, your life will change. As soon as you are called, there is only one thing God asks for himself, that you truly love him, be in a long-term relationship with God, that is all he expects. Mary. Easter must never become a remembrance, a mere celebration, or worse, a discussion or debate. For Jesus wants to come to us again and again and again and here and now. As with Mary, he calls each one of us by name and he asks us, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? What are you straining to find? What is upsetting you so? Why are you afraid? He speaks into our hearts personally, directly, so we can see him as he really is. Our Lord finds us and wants us, Mary and AJ and Art and Dale and all of us. Our relationship comes with Jesus, comes to everyone who feels lost without him. This is the miracle of Easter. On our own, we could never find him, but he can find us. Our names, our names are on his lips because God loves you and so do I. Amen.